Hey everyone, today we're going to take a look at part two of growing quinoa in raised beds. Part one was transplanting and growth and part two is going to be the harvest. Uh, so it's August 12th. These guys were transplanted out about 71 days ago. Uh, they grew very well, probably a little bit too well. A couple of the plants ended up being over eight feet tall and most were around six to eight feet tall. Uh, now I've never grown it before but I'm pretty sure it's ready to be harvested when the seed heads start turning color and the leaves drop off the stalk. Uh, so these seed heads are just starting to turn color and the leaves have been dropping off for about the last week. But the problem is with the um, plants being as tall as they are, they're top heavy. And I'm in the northeast and when we get the uh, heavy summer rains, uh, the stalks are snapping. Uh, now we had rain yesterday. Uh, quite a few of the stalks have snapped. It's going to be sunny today, but we've got rain forecast for the next three days. So. What I'm doing when the um, stalks land on the ground, I can't leave them there because they're just going to rot. I made like a little drying rack and I'm just going to hang all the uh, broken stalks on the drying rack and see what happens. So again, we've got rain coming over the next three days and I'll just have to wait and see what happens. And I'll do another update in a couple of weeks. So I'll see you then. Okay, the rain is taking its toll on the quinoa, but not quite as bad as I thought it was going to be. The plants are still standing, it's just that I'm losing stems like crazy. So I think what I'm going to do is I am simply just going to take the stems that have seed heads and I'm just going to cut them off instead of waiting for them to uh, snap. I had to make a second drying rack over there because this one's full already. Uh, these guys are turning nice different shades of uh, orange and yellow and pink though. They're probably halfway ready to be harvested. It's a little bit humid, but there's not much we could do about that. Now this guy on the end, if you saw the first video, it was the one that snapped off in the first storm, and that one's ready to go. I'll probably do that tomorrow because it's supposed to rain again today. So anyway, all in all, it's doing pretty good. And uh, when I get ready to harvest the seed heads, I'll do another update. So I'll see you then. Okay, I just got done cutting these stems off of the quinoa and I'm getting ready to dig them up out of the raised bed. So I just want to go over a couple of things. Now, if you saw the first video, these are the two large transplants here. Uh, and I don't know why it grew so crooked like that. I mean, you can see it coming out of the ground here, going pretty much straight up that way. Um, that happened within the first few weeks. Again, I'm not really sure why. Uh, now these are the two medium transplants. This is a uh, direct seeded. Again, it's not quite as apparent because it's smaller, but this one also grew a little bit crooked. These are the two other two large transplants, and this is a direct seeded. Uh, the other two direct seeded I pulled up, they just, um, there was no point in letting them go. They weren't growing very well, and I didn't think they could compete with the larger plants. So if you want to see the stems, they're hollow, like that. Um, here's the... I guess the yield over here, these guys I'm not keeping. I'm going to take them to the municipal, municipal uh, compost pile. It's too much for my small compost pile. Uh, these guys I'm going to sort through and I'll hang them to dry. Um, these are the guys that were already cut. I've actually moved these guys into the garage because it just it won't stop raining and they'll never dry. And this is the guy I'm going to be harvesting uh, probably this afternoon. That's the one that was broken off in the storm. And then i got a couple more little ones hanging here. Um, I don't think I'm going to be able to pull up the roots. Just I don't think there's a tap root or anything like that. But let's just see what happens. Oh no, actually that's oh that's pretty easy. Uh, well this is the one that came down in the storm, so that's probably why it's so easy. So that actually doesn't look like much of a root ball considering um, you know how big the plants got. So I mean, let's see if I can get this guy out. No, that's the same thing. This guy doesn't have much of a root ball either. Again, that's pretty surprising. So, anyway, I'm gonna keep going with it. I'm gonna clean up these beds and I'm gonna start harvesting the quinoa. So I will be back in probably a couple of weeks. Okay, it's been a few weeks and most of the quinoa is pretty much dry enough to uh, be harvested. So uh, basically what I just do to uh, get it off these stems is I just take it and run my fingers down there like that. That gets most of it off. Just right like that. It's very easy. Again, it has to be dry in order to do that. And then sometimes you get, even if you, uh, 
if you get a piece in there you just have to go back in there and clean it up like that so I'm gonna finish doing um, you know stripping down the uh, the stalks and I'll finish the rest of it um, inside so I'll see you again in, in a little while Okay, I ended up with about, uh, this is a three gallon tub and it ended up being filled up to about the halfway point here. Uh, and I only uh, harvested the large seed heads, not the small ones. I put everything else into the compost pile for the most part. And I've been working on figuring out a way to separate the chaff from the seeds. Uh, I tried a strainer, you know, just a standard strainer, but uh, it's too fine a mesh and it wouldn't let the seeds go through. So I have this mini salad spinner. Again, it's a small one, it's not a full-size one, I use it for the microgreens. And I found that if I take the basket out of that, it's a little bit labor-intensive, but I, I can't really figure out anything else at this point yet. And I just take a handful of the quinoa, put it in there, and I just kind of move it back and forth. And the mesh of the um, spinner basket allows the seed to pull through, while most of the chafe ends up staying in the basket so this is like step one and then when that gets done I just take it and I put it into another pail and that goes into the compost pile now this is what you end up with uh, it's not all seeds so at this point what I do is I take this and I put this now I put it into the strainer and I just uh, move it back and forth and if you shake it enough let me see I'll move that up a little bit if you shake it enough the rest of the chafe comes to the top and I just take it and I take it off a little bit at a time. Again, it's a little bit tedious, but I haven't figured anything else out at this point. And then the seeds stay on the bottom. And this would be step two. So I'm going to do a little bit more of this and then I'll show you step three. And that's pretty much what you end up with. And I take it and dump it right into the uh, bowl. And this is mostly seeds. Hopefully you could see that. All right, I'll be back in a minute. I'm going to finish doing more of this. And then uh, I'll show you what I do for step three. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, the next step that I found was to take... I actually found this quite by accident. Uh, I just took some of the quinoa and put it into a bowl. And once you add water to the bowl, the rest of the chafe that you won't, probably can't get off, you know, with the strainer, if you put it into a bowl with water and you get the um, seeds in the chafe to absorb the water, just give it a minute or so, the chafe will rise to the top. And again, it still is a little bit tedious here. Once it, that happens, you uh, just take what rises to the top, and you will get some of the seeds in here, but for the most part, it's the, the chafe that's much lighter, and that floats, and it rises to the top. And you can, I, I found it easier to use just my fingers, but you can use, you know, like a regular plastic spoon. That would work okay. And you just keep going along. And at some point, I mean, it's not ready yet, but just for the sake of the video, you can take the bowl and you can pour it off and most of the chafe will come off and the seeds will remain nice and clean on the bottom. So uh, that's that. And I'm just going to go to the next step. And so I'll be back in just one minute to show you the difference between store-bought and the homegrown. So I'll be back in a minute. Okay, as far as yield is concerned, I still have uh, almost the same amount. I didn't do too much more from the first part of the video uh, as far as harvesting goes. And what I had came to roughly about 9 ounces. That's, this is a 2.5 quart. There it is there. This is a 2.5 quart Pyrex bowl. Uh, it fills it not quite halfway, a little bit less than that. But still, as I mentioned, I still have a lot left to go. Now, this is store-bought. 12 ounces. It was five dollars. It's a uh, Royal Bolivian Organic Ancient Harvest. I just got it at the supermarket. And just to give you an idea of what it looks like, this is the store-bought and this is the homegrown. So the homegrown is a little bit darker. What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to cook it up uh, according to the directions from the store-bought and see what it tastes like. So I'll be back in a couple of minutes. 
Okay, this is the final segment in the harvesting quinoa video. What I did was I took a half a cup of each quinoa along with a cup of water, brought it to a boil, reduced it to a simmer, covered it, and simmered it for 15 minutes. So this is the store-bought. Uh, no surprises there. came out just fine. This is the homegrown. Uh, the homegrown required a little bit less water, so what I did was uh, for the last like two or three minutes I took the lid off and cranked the heat up to dissipate some of the water. Uh, the homegrown does have a little more texture to it and has a slightly different flavor, but then again I'm probably a little biased in my opinion because I grew it. So uh, I'm very happy with it. Uh, it was a little, you know, tedious, labor intensive to harvest it. But, um, you know, most vegetables require something. I mean, think of tomatoes. you got to tie them up. you got to pinch them off. Um, string beans, peas, you got to uh, cucumbers, you got to make a trellis. Um, potatoes, carrots, celery, you got to leeks, you got to hill the soil. So every vegetable requires something. It's just that the quinoa requires a little bit of work towards the end. So, But I think it was worth it. The seed pack was uh, only $2. So just if you only plant two um plants you know just plant two of the seeds i think it would be a worthwhile effort and uh, i hope you found this video informative and as always thanks very much for watching